So just getting everything fired up right here. Uh, just some things. Um, going to be unboxing oh, the. Just getting everything oh, fired up right here. Eat that, don't I? There we go. Get everything fired up here. Um, going to be uh, doing a uh, TiVo Tornado unboxing here in just a moment. Uh, let me see here. As I get everything all figured out. Need to do this a little bit more to get better at doing this, don't I? Anyhow, so uh, GearBest sent this over for me to review. I'm going to unbox it here on live, uh, on Twitch here live, um, and I will then upload this to uh, Twitter, or not Twitter, um, YouTube later, and I will set up a website talking about some of my initial impressions and, um, and the unboxing and maybe some build notes, stuff like that like what I've done with other videos. So again, thank you to GearBest for sending this over to try out. Um, I'm actually really excited to put this up against the uh, Creality CR10. Uh, I've been running that for a few weeks now. Uh, that is a very, very impressive printer. I understand where the hype is uh, now that I've been printing with that recently. Um, I'm looking forward to moving over to the, or uh, start printing on the TiVo Tornado. Um, I know that the TiVo Tornado fixes one of the problems that I really find frustrating with the CR10. Sorry, I'm eating this, dropping this down a little bit. I'm seeing that's peaking a little bit. Um, it fixes the the time it takes to uh, start the or to start printing because the build plate uh, heats up faster. So that'll be interesting to do uh, as part of it. <clears throat> uh, for Christmas, I got this little doohickey here. It is a actually. Let's put it here. Um, it is a Wemo uh, switch. It actually will send what is going on um, or how much power is taken through this. So I'm kind of curious to see what this, how this will compare to the CR10. Um, since I have that capability, it's kind of nice to run them head to head, you know, just to kind of see what power consumption is. Uh, the CR10 really doesn't take that much power. Um, when I was looking at it, we're talking like $6. And in Idaho, I'm in Boise, Idaho, and we have fairly low power rates. But here in Idaho, it's about $6 a month to run is all. Um, and that's, I think I figured out something like 20 hours a day, 30 days a month. So um, not too bad. So looking forward to this. Uh, TiVo Tornado. Uh, again, my website is makerfun3d.com. Uh, come over. We talk about 3D printers. Uh, I've done a few live builds. I'm going to be doing the CR10. Um, I just noticed the focus a little bit soft there. Uh, I'm going to be doing the CR10 um, review here very soon. Uh, that will show up on the website as well. So um, I hope you enjoy this live build. I hope you check out my website. And here we go. So let's first. Usually I do a little bit of work before this, but I figure I'll do this full, ah, get it all done at once here. Ah. There we go. This is a lot of packaging. Here's the, the manual. So I've got the manual here. <clears throat> one of the bed sheets, the red one. This 
is pretty well packaged. You can see it's pretty tight here. On the top here, power, oops, power box. parts and everything else we need to get this put together with. Uh, we do a good job of making so it's difficult to damage in shipment, it seems. Okay, so here's the gantry. The gantries come out first. Uh, Like the CR10 that I put together recently. Uh, there we go. Off the side. So now we can put this together. So here's the base. Let's see this right here. Give me a second. Been having a cold lately or something of a cold, so trying to fight through that. Give me a second here. Okay, I'm back. And I noticed a cat came in, so hopefully he won't cause too many problems. So here's the print they put on the bed. Second here. <laughs> um, let's get this off. Hmm. Use the tool they gave me. See some people getting these off as one piece. I do not seem to be having that kind of luck. It's very brittle. Actually, let me use this because it's already out. So yeah, I've got little pieces of stuff flying everywhere. This is kind of disaster. those times to suggest eye protection just because these things are flying everywhere. Could be the hardest part of the build, I hope. I'm hopeful that this is the hardest part. Ah, this is a disaster. Okay. Let's get these last pieces out. You know, the bed looks good with that, but man, trying to clear it is kind of a pain in the butt. There we go. The plate's done. Holy cow. Yeah, um, so, you know what, get that out of here, so I don't need that right now. Let's have a look at the instructions, because it's a good thing to do right about now. 
Probably should have done that earlier. There we go. Who likes to read instructions? I know I don't. A little card left in there. Okay. So that goes right into assembly. Uh, there's an A and there's a B and um, so we need to install. Let's see. I assume those go with that one. Sorry, I'm just looking through these tools really quick to get an idea of what they are. Um, I was sent a European adapter, but I am I told them it's okay because I've got tons and I mean tons of US uh, cords. I'm not too worried about that. Okay. So these are bed loading screws, so that's not gonna do me any good. And bolts. Uh, looks like the bolts for that. That's the bolts for bed leveling. That's bolts for that. So I am missing some bolts. I'm guessing they're in the packaging somewhere. I'm just going through this really quick to see what else there's anything else big that I need to worry about here? Yeah. Okay. So, let us see. Oh, there's even more packaging. <clears throat> actually, you know what? Let's take this. It's one thing I haven't done. Uh, no. Actually, let's twist ties. Take the bed off. Because I see that there's more packing material between the bed and the. Um, the Y. Okay. Or the Y carriage, I should say. Sorry about that. And there's always a little more exciting to do when it's live because, you know, you really have no idea exactly what's going on. I tend to try to do these a little blind uh, on purpose so that I get that experience of, hey, what's all of this stuff? But on the flip side, it also kind of makes it a little difficult when things aren't quite exactly right. So, uh, I'm seeing if these bolts actually. Bolts could already be. No. <clears throat> I can see that it was assembled with those bolts at one point. Uh, so these are the side braces. And uh, I think I found them. Aha. So these are the side braces, and the side braces have fairly short bolts. They don't have these four long ones. That's what I need. And the four lock washers are the same. So there we go. This feels pretty nice. It's real smooth. Always like that. Now, this goes like this. Now for the fun part. It's always a little... I think Krenner's is a good two-person job. So one person doing is a little more difficult. But we'll get through it. they sent with this.
holes are pretty quick. Uh, these are kind of short. Oh. That's not good. I failed to do. I failed to put the lock washer on the, the one on the bottom here. That was kind of silly of me, wasn't it? Let's get that backed out. Let's get the lock washer on that. And get this back on. Big plans for this printer. I hope to get a bunch of train pumped out. I've been printing some stuff from Warlayer as of late, among some other things. Uh, Christmas present for several of my buddies was uh, some new train that I printed. Um, all different scales for different types of games. Um, from BattleTech for one friend over to uh, 40. You know, the other two were 40k. One plays Space Marines, one plays Tyranids, so created a uh, train for all of those, or printed a train. Print stuff from um, uh, War Lair Orbital and War Lair 2 Orbital Drops. I've got a few of his uh, pre release models that he's sent me over to try out. Um, there will be some, actually, some pictures of those They're showing up on my website here. Hopefully tomorrow. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff going on tonight after I've done here. And I'll start putting this through its paces tomorrow night or tomorrow morning. Um, and after I get this fired up and running, then I'm going to work on some articles tomorrow and get that all going. My, see my mouse moving all over because this gantry is touching the mouse and moving it. One last one here. Actually, I'm going to check all those too. <clears throat> hmm, this is interesting. Some rubber feet on here. It's kind of a nice little addition. Planning on getting some, printing up some squash ball feet for the CR10. Like this doesn't I don't even need to worry about that on this. Seems nice and tight, so let's put this up right. There we go. Let's see from under it. Odd sound, it's a little loose. Let's get this rest of this all set up. Okay, so then we need to put these two, what they call them, T shaped frame reinforcements. The one with the, um, uh, the one with the Z stop over here. This one here, and then the plane is here. So let's get these set up here. Everybody loves T nuts, don't they? Actually, we're pretty good for this, but man, it's never fun trying to get them started in the channels down there.
that. Sorry, going quiet here, just trying to get this all done. Okay. <clears throat> Push the in. There we go. Threaded this one. It's not letting go very well. T brace down and the other T brace is <clears throat> like the bottom two don't have a T nut or not or don't um, looks like the top two the vertical two sorry about that go to the, um, the Z stop and these bottom two do not. Kind of looking at it, you can see where it was lasered out. Not you can see very well here, but the bottom here, or the, this side of it, it's a little more rough. So putting that towards the base of the body, uh, that should help it look a little better. And it looks like the Z stop goes like so. I'll add these two to it. Oh, you know what? These are too long. Well, this one is. Actually, you know what? I wonder if that's the problem with the other one. I wonder if I, since I've mixed these two up, I have a feeling that's what I did then. This is the right height. So let's see here. If this goes like so, that goes through like so. And that goes through like so. That should work. There we go. So those are done. Now we'll do the base two again. Yeah, these are much shorter gloves. So that's what I did. I did that wrong originally. That's pretty minor. Hey, Butcher. Um, let's see here. Almost done here. Like this. Okay. Let's need to 
these put in. The nice thing about this is it's got an adjustable Z, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, lots of buzzing on my on my phone. Let's see here. Da, da, da. Okay, so basically what it's telling me right? basically what it's saying is collect this, make sure it's all set up right. It's, it does say more than that. For all intents and purposes, that's really what it's telling me. So something interesting here. They leave the paper. I've seen people wonder about this. They leave the paper on here on the I'm gonna see. Yeah, uh, if you see see that white, that's the paper. It's on the speaker, which um, the nice thing about them doing that is it means that the speaker um, is quite as loud. And I've heard that the speaker on the surfboard they use can be very very loud. Okay. So this is the Z limit switch. <clears throat> and this is for the Z motor. Probably should have built from the outside in, but oh well, too late now. I already started. Can't stop. Okay. So there's the Z. Um, y limit. And then this will go over there. This goes to the Y motor. Actually, let's put the Z limit switch in first. It faces that direction. There we go. And why limit switch somewhere? There we go. Okay. Now we have the hot end with these eight different plugins here. the pin to, I don't know that to go in one direction face upwards but it doesn't it faces off to the side there okay let's so make sure that PTFE tubes all the way down yep. there we go hope that's good if not I'm gonna do a mouse Into some fine tuning here, leveling the plate, slicing software. Um, how to flash the firmware? Wow, it's very different. So, I, my very first 3D printer is a Tivo Tarantula, so this is a real step up from that. Uh, let's see here. No. Oh. I say, hey, look, I've got a power plug, but that would unplug my printer or my, my computer. That would be good. So I do have a power plug here. Now let's put the bed on. So 
this is anything like the other one. I can basically go like this goes through here, here. Whoops, like the Spring goes in. So these are definitely larger thumb nuts than what's upon the uh, what's it called the tarantula, but definitely going to be one of my first prints as a larger um, larger another deal in there to get a better grip. I'm gonna actually think these are I'm pretty sure this is correct, but these aren't countersunk like I was expecting. Okay, I didn't want to talk about it much. I'm up to on this. Oh, I can't see. So we're half an hour in, and it's like it's being close to being done here. I'd say that's a pretty fast build. Makes life a little harder. That's going to go on the wrong side of that. There's the last three of these. So Tilo's had their Titan. Extruder out for a little while, but this will be the first time that I've used it on this 3D printer. I actually have one in a box up there when they very first got them out. I ended up ordering one, but I haven't really had a need for it as of yet. Um, so, for those of you that don't know, <coughs> Tivo sends these. Uh, micro SD card says they're 8 gigs. The chance of it actually working is fairly low. Best thing you do with them, toss it. Use a real SD card. But I do have to admit, I do like that this uses an SD card, not a micro SD card. At least for me, since I tend to have more SDs than micro SDs. Let's see. When they assembled these, it doesn't look like they consistently put the pin in the same spot. Well, off on both of them. There we go. Okay, now, I think this usually there's a there isn't one on this one. Usually there's a 110 to um, 220 slider on the power supply. Some other ones that I've had have had that.
I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay. Plug this in. Actually, this particular cord is a little low, short. Let's fire it up. It has the Tornado logo coming up. Here, I'll show you. If I can hit this button. There we go. So there we go. We have the... That a bit. There we go. So there it is. So let's see, let's do prepare. Surprise, there's no nothing coming in there. Let's see, let's move axis. Move the X. Move the one. And I'm getting no movement. So it looks like my display is on, but I'm questioning if I've got any other power. Because there's the fans aren't moving, and usually there's fans moving at this point. So let's get this figured out. There we go. Okay. Let's unplug the power here. Let's look inside here. What do we, what, what do we have in here? Look at what's inside here. It's probably the quietest this is ever going to be while the display runs. <laughs> uh, definitely thinking on some of these printers by getting up to a fan. The CR10 is very loud. I notice it's box clean fan is having some problems too. Oh, so it actually looks like it's one piece here. I'll pull these off too. Seems like things never quite work out the very first time, do they? I'm, what I'm guessing right now is that the, there is a switch. Since this is set up for the EU, this is probably, I'm thinking the power supply might be set to 220. And 110 doesn't really run, so. Or hoping, I should say, more so than anything. The um, switch is on the side of the power supply inside the box, and I need to switch it to 10, and it should work. Okay, let me see if there's something like that listed. Okay, there's the select switch. It's kind of behind a hole. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's in this cage. There it goes. Okay, so here I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. I find this of interest. See my big hairy hand, I bet you're happy about that. So here's the board inside. There is the 
uh, switch that allows this to heat up so much faster. It's up there. Uh, this is the power supply, and this is the switch that I was looking at. You can see that it's 220 and 110. Flipped it over to the 110 side. I, I hope that works. Uh, again, this is what it looks like. Let's get rid of this camera. Actually, I'll just let the camera go in here. Give you a different view. There we go. So now, let's get back together carefully. Those cables on the side. I don't want to mess anything up. This is not quite working. There we go. That helps a lot. Here, if I get too ahead of myself, click this in and see if we get fans and all the noise that normally is associated with one of these. Nope, nothing. Hmm. Well, it looks like I get to look back in there again and have to figure out what's going on there. So that should be it right there. We should be at 110. Let's see here. Is it right on? This cable goes. This is the fun part. Get a trace cables. Yes. Love, not really. I really don't love doing this. Um, uh, 
the thing is, is things look like they're uh, in there pretty good. I didn't know any better, I'd say this should just work. But it's not. Okay, let's try this one more time. Plugged in. Okay, so the T load comes on. Let's plug in. Let's make sure it's not just the. It's not just the um, uh, what's it called? The that one fan. It's, I can replace a fan fairly simply. Okay. Tornado logo comes up. Okay, I think I might have figured out the reason why X won't move. I don't have it plugged in. Let's try the Y. Okay, so that's working. I have a feeling that there's just something wrong with that. Either the fan or the cabling to the fan. That's easy enough to fix. <clears throat> yeah, I completely forgot to hook up this cable. So this is the extruder motor connector. This is the X motor connector. And that last one is the X end stop, which is right here. And that goes from the back here. I will lay you on so that the X movement will work much better with that plugged in. Oh, whoops. I clicked Home X. I didn't actually mean to do that, but that worked. I won't actually Home X. I want to tweak it just a little bit before I get into that. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to call that there. Um, I want to tweak a couple things. The, <clears throat> the eccentric numbers are a little off. I don't know if I'm able to do this. Oh no, I guess it's not. Uh, no, I can see that's off there. Oops. 
So for whatever reason, that's I said let's let's adjust the eccentric nut here. Hear that, but I think I would tighten this a little bit. Or oops, I'm not. So the sound is coming from, I'm pretty sure this one right here isn't really attached well. After I did that, it's actually pretty good. I may take that apart and have a look at that. I'm not sure. But so it's basically together. Um, a couple issues with it, but nothing totally insurmountable. I'm still a little concerned about the power supply, or not power supply, but the fan in there. Uh, but it could just be too, the fan doesn't really start working until it's under load. I don't know for sure. Uh, it's something I have to look into. Um, but basically start to finish, the build on this was less than an hour. So uh, that's pretty much it. So again, thanks for watching. This is the live build of the TiVo Tornado. Uh, thank you to GearBest for sending this out to me. And you can always uh, visit my site at makerfun3d.com, cover printers and 3D printable train and role-playing game train and stuff like that. Uh, the, the more fun side of 3D printing. So again, name's Kevin Rank. Uh, I run Makerfun3D. Take care.